Hello everyone, I am Kate and I want to thank you for being on the webinar today. Social media marketing has become vital in networking, especially for those without a warm market. And even those with a warm market, yours may be saturated from other marketing endeavors that you've been involved in or they simply aren't interested yet. Networkers used to go door to door to sell, but now people can get content in front of a prospect's eyes and instead of selling to everyone without a targeted approach, you can sell to people who might actually be interested through targeting like ads, hashtags, and so on. So before we get into this, I have an odd request. I want you to take a screenshot of this slide right here because it will come to play later in this session. I'll also give you just a few seconds to do so. Okay, I'd also like to encourage you to take screenshots of the information you may want to come back to later. Okay, so let's get into it. All right, we're gonna cover three main aspects of this training today. The why, where to start, and the strategy or the mindset to have when marketing with social media. So, why get into social media now? The earlier that you start, the faster you will see growth in your business. Your competition's reach is already increasing on social media day by day. So by not getting into the game now, you're allowing your competitors to have first dibs on all your potential customers. And even if you're starting from scratch and your competitor has two to 5,000 or even 10,000 followers, if you market correctly, it's highly likely you'll have more success with conversions than your competitor will. It just depends on what their marketing strategy is and how yours differs. So why is social media important? Well, it's a cost-effective way to advertise to your ideal prospects through targeting, and it complements other marketing strategies such as a paid advertising campaign. Now, social media sites have information such as user profile data, which can be used to target a specific set of users when advertising with ads. And hashtags are important in this aspect. They kind of work like a filing system. So if you add the hashtag for life research to a post, it'll be added to the hashtag for life research quote unquote file. So anyone that searches or clicks on that hashtag on somebody else's post that features that hashtag will see your post in that file. Usually they're categorized by day and time posted or most popular. So I suggest adding a few different types of hashtags. So some with a high volume of posts that are used often and some with a low volume of posts that are not used as often. Now with ads, there are many ways to do ads. Uh, maybe we can do a webinar specifically on social media ads. Uh, comment on this webinar if you would be interested in that. But as for now, I'll explain the importance of ads on social media. Uh, they're night and day, I would say, compared to traditional like billboard ads or commercials or even ads in a magazine. If you do ads correctly, you can put what you want in front of the people that you want. So with social media, the platform you're posting on has access to that user profile data I mentioned earlier, like name, gender, age, user interests, which can be used in target advertising. And this comes into play when you search for, say, a new saw on Google, and you start seeing ads for different types of saws from different types of brands on websites that allow ads on those pages. Now, one of the other benefits of social media is that it also helps increase your website traffic. So by sharing your content on social media, you're giving users a reason to click through to your website. On your social account, the more quality content that you share, the more inbound traffic you will generate while making conversion opportunities. And the important thing here is to make people intrigued enough to make them want to check out your link. So on websites like a blog, this can turn this in turn may increase your page rank, page rank, resulting in increased traffic from leading search engines. 
Number four, another reason that social media is important. So it's an opportunity for you to build your quote unquote brand on your terms. So what is your brand? The definition is a particular identity or image regarded as an asset. So like, what do people think of when they think of you or your company? So creating a voice for your company is important in improving your overall brand image. When customers see your company posting on social media and replying to their questions and comments, it helps them build a positive image of you. So regularly interacting with your customers proves that you genuinely care about them. And as a bonus, once you get a few satisfied customers who are vocal about their positive experience, the advertising will be done for you by the genuine customers who appreciate your products or services. And number five, the last point on why social media is important. You can improve your brand loyalty. So when you have a social media presence, you make it easier for your customers to find you and connect with you. So customers see social platforms as service channels where they can directly communicate with the business. So you should be, get, you should be interacting with them and getting back with them ASAP to improve that brand loyalty. So we've covered why to jump on the social media marketing bandwagon and why social media is important for you and your business as brand. Now we'll move on to the strategy of how to do this correctly to maximize your efforts because what's the point in doing it if you don't get results? So for those of you who have done social media and feel like you don't get good results, the remainder of this training will be important for you as we'll be going over where to go to revitalize your social media game and a strategy to implement these points. So let's go ahead and get into that. So what are your strengths? You definitely want to play to those in the beginning. Are you good at taking pictures? Consider Instagram. Are you good at talking? Consider live videos. They do those on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. Um, are you a good learner when it comes to computer stuff? Uh, consider making YouTube videos and making graphics on Canva. Um, once you master one platform, go conquer something else. I definitely don't recommend having a profile on every single platform out there, especially in the beginning, because you'll only be able to give minimal effort to each of those platforms, which is not worth being on the platform. If you can't give your all to it, why be on it? So once you have a good flow going on one platform and you're playing to that strength and you have it down, you feel like you want to start another, feel free to start up something new. If you don't have enough knowledge, go learn. Nowadays, there's no excuse for not knowing how to do something. You can learn pretty much anything on the internet. So I suggest making a quick search on Google or on YouTube. Um, look at a few different sources. I definitely suggest that because people have different ways of teaching and differing opinions. So I suggest that you vary your sources to make sure you get a well-rounded understanding of whatever you're searching for. Okay, create high quality content. You need to develop interesting and high quality content. So what information will your target audience find helpful? Find the questions that are left unanswered in your industry and answer them. Create you incorporated. So you as a person and the value that you bring to others as an individual should be your business. Utilize attraction marketing because people buy into you before they buy into the business. I've heard many times before people join you, not the opportunity. So show them what you're doing for them so they know the type of support that they can expect to receive from you if they do join. Uh, post rank advancements, team calls and webinars, and show them the type of leader that you are and how you lead your team. Remember when I told you to take that screenshot at the beginning of this webinar? Post that. That's a great idea. Add it to uh, like your social media page and let them know what your take was on what was presented. Did it help you? Would it help them? Let them know. Um, you can show and explain to them why you joined. What did you see as an asset when deciding to join this opportunity? Was it the support you receive? 
Um, if this information would be val valuable to your ideal prospect, make sure that you share it. Get involved, okay? Join online groups or mailing lists that are related to the products and services that you offer. Connect with these groups and offer information and assistance. Adopt a collaborative, helpful approach and be an active contributor. So contribute, collaborate, inform, but do not sell unless those groups allow it. If it's not allowed, it will get you kicked out of that group. You can also join groups for hobbies that you're interested in. I love succulents and gardening, so I've joined many groups on Facebook related to both. And I never post about the business or anything related to the products in those groups. But by asking questions about plants or succulents in those groups and offering some type of value and being a genuinely nice person, it allows people to become intrigued about who you are. And that interest may lead to them clicking on your profile where your high quality and high value post will be. Another point on getting involved is engagement. Engagement is literally everything when it comes to the algorithm on various platforms. The algorithm is meant to show people what they want to see. And if it notices that you post content, but you never engage with the people who interact with your posts or with other people's posts in general, your posts will not be at the top of the algorithm's list to show people who may be interested in them. So getting involved goes beyond just interacting with the people who interact with your posts. It's also about interacting with other people on that platform in a general sense. So it's worth noting that if you can't engage with your potential customers and teammates and your current customers and teammates, you may have a long road to success. And I know that sounds a little harsh, but that's just how it is nowadays. People need to trust who they're joining and buying from. So make each connection a meaningful one. They may just become a lifelong teammate or customer of yours. And anytime you post your business, give them more than just your join link. Tell people how you believe this will benefit them. Make it personal. Posting just your link will do absolutely nothing if you don't take the time to tell them why joining this opportunity or consuming these products is good for them to do. It's also a great idea to transfer credibility, okay? You don't just tell them why you believe these products are good for them. Tell them about the university studies that have been done on the products. What the scientists or doctors say about them. What do other consumers say about the products? Transferring credibility is a huge asset, especially when building rapport that you don't already have with somebody. All right, now let's get to this strategy. So what do you want? You have to figure this out before jumping in to get exactly what you want. So think about your ideal prospect. What qualities do they have? What potential do they have? And so on. Always keep this in mind and market towards them. Base your posts, your hashtags, ad, your content, everything off of that. Figure out how to help your ideal prospect get from the current mindset they're in to where you want them to go and figure out what content they would enjoy. What would motivate them? How would you talk to this person about the products or opportunity? And after you brainstorm this, you'll need to either find this content on For Life's website, Facebook page, the For Life Connect application or you can make it yourself. And if you decide to make it uh, yourself, you need to visit For Life's Compliance Corner on the very bottom of their website. Because if you go against For Life's policies and procedures in marketing, you can be suspended or terminated. And they take this very seriously. This protects your lifelong business with For Life. Now, uh, there are like product uh, profile sheets that you can view on the website um, for life posts a lot of stuff on the various social media platforms that they're on so you don't necessarily have to create content but 
If you do decide to, you need to visit their compliance corner to make sure that you are being compliant with their policies and procedures. Okay, so a few keys to remember. One, if you're starting from scratch, the best thing that you can do is stay consistent. So follow a posting schedule and stay consistent in the type of information that you're providing. And as time goes on, you can analyze what type of content performs well with your ideal prospects and adjust accordingly. Number two, if you're starting with a following, but you don't want to market towards them, like they're not your ideal prospects, you could start a new page just for your business and follow the same steps as those who are starting from scratch. So you could occasionally tie in the products to your posts on your original account to target product users. Number three, if you're starting with a following and you want to market towards them, you need to slowly filter this information in, especially if you've never sold anything to them before. So this is called relationship marketing. And the key with this is not losing the followers you already have, rather getting them to fall in love with you as a person so they follow you wherever you go, whatever you're doing, and they want to come along with you on your journey and learn how you did what you're doing while following you. So you have to consider your current engagement. Do you get a lot of engagement on your posts? Do your followers interact with you really well on live videos? Different things. And if they do engage a lot, this transition won't be that hard. Reason being, you've already sold them on you as a person. They like you. They should trust you by now. So you could just tell them about something new that you're doing and how excited you are about this and tell them why you started. Let them know that if they do join you, you'll be working with them one-on-one. -on -one. You'll They'll be a part of your team and you'll help them get where they want to go. After this, it's vital to stick with your regularly scheduled content, the content you posted before joining this, to keep them engaged. Occasionally filter in those images of meetings that you're doing with clients or trips that you're going on because of your business, products you're consuming for your health, different things, and sell them on the fun that you're having and the support that you are providing. Now, if they don't engage a lot on your videos, you most likely have uninterested followers. They might have done the follow unfollow technique, which I don't suggest, and you might have even done this technique, but here is the reason why I don't suggest it. Most of the time, they don't interact with you once you followed them, and you don't interact with them once they've followed you. No interaction or engagement is not good for the algorithm that we talked about earlier. That's giving it signals that you don't post anything that's interesting to your followers. So they, or the algorithm, isn't putting it in front of many people's eyes. And if you have this type of following that doesn't interact with you, start posting any and all content that you want to post. Sell your current followers on you, not the business or the products. You need to resell them on why they should follow you. Show them who you are. Occasionally filter in those videos or images of you having meetings and wearing outfits to your meetings and different things that you would want to post and sell them on the fun that you're having and the support you're providing to those who have joined you. So this strategy can also be used in your business right now. Do you have existing clients that aren't doing much? Figure out why. Figure out why they joined in the first place. See if there's anything you can do to help them achieve their goals or inspire them to get going again. Okay, so looks like we are at the end of this webinar. Let's go ahead and go into your homework. That's right, I am giving you some homework. So remember when I told you to take a screenshot at the beginning of this webinar? Post that to your social media sites. Include your take on what was presented. Did it help you? Would it help them? Let me know. Okay, I'll bring it back to this slide so you can take a screenshot if you were not able to before. I'll give you a few seconds to do so. Okay, so by sharing that screenshot, you're doing a few things. You're uh, showing them that you're interested in learning more to help your team. 
you're showing them that you have the type of support team that does this type of training and you're showing them that they will have access to this type of training if they join your team and whenever you post anything think about your reasons for doing so first this will help you narrow down what you should add as the description or the hashtags and remember to base the information you add off of your ideal prospect and off of your goals. Okay, so that is the end of our training today. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys should be pretty well off with your foundation for social media training. Uh, we do have, I think, three basic platforms. Uh, that we will go over in the next training, which you can find on our YouTube channel or maybe later on in this course. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, let us know if you have any questions. Join our Facebook group. We would love to have you in there uh, so we can answer any questions that you have. You might get some social media ideas through there. And I hope you all have a very blessed day.